I had an old uh, grill and it was made out of aluminum and you can see it was pretty thick so I took it over to my brother's and he has a uh, as a uh, what do you call it a plasma cutter and I was able to just kind of cut it um, the, the grill into some pieces and this is relatively square and so what I plan to do I kind of cut a little hole in it with like a freehanded a little hole with the plasma cutter but what I plan to do is even up these edges and make a router base plate for my router. So, so currently, I want to. Then the whole point of this is to try to make some doors for um, a cabinet that I've been working on. And my router has this base plate by that comes with it by default, and the hole is pretty small here. Okay. So I really needed a bigger hole about this size. And the whole point of getting a, a bigger hole is to accommodate these larger bits. And so I looked online because I thought, well, maybe I could just buy a new plate for my router. And I'm kind of thrifty. But anyway, the point is, is like a, a piece of a quarter inch aluminum plate, like a, a foot by foot, like square was like almost forty dollars so I thought eh, if I can just cut up my old grill that I don't use anymore and uh, make my own plate that will save quite a bit of money so anyway that's my goal I'm gonna clamp this down and, and just use a file and knock off some of this extra material and I might grind this part down there's these humps here that stand proud of the plate so I might grind those down with an angle grinder just to get it flat. So there, there's a bit of slag that was left on the cuts, but uh, my brother had never used it on aluminum before. He didn't even know it could work, but we looked up online and it looked like it was pretty easy to do. So it, it actually cut a lot faster than we were anticipating. And uh, but it did leave some slag ha hanging off the edges, so I'm gonna just knock them down with a file here. Well, angle grinder probably work a lot faster on this, so I'm gonna go get an angle grinder really quick. You ready? Now what I plan to do is even out these edges because that I'm not so great. My brother is pretty steady hand, but when I was trying to use the plasma cutter, you can see it's just it's straight, but it's not so great there. So anyway, I'm going to try to clean up these edges by cutting it on the table saw here, uh, but with a special blade. Okay, and so the blade I'm going to use is this C5 metal cutting circular saw blade, and I looked it up, and apparently. C5 is like, has to do with a special rating on these carbide teeth, uh, determining how hard, some of the properties of the teeth itself. And so I guess the carbide teeth that would be used for wood are slightly different than what would be used for metal. So I'm gonna try using this blade on the table saw. I use my uh, my grandpa's old table saw here and he uh, he made a little uh, fence a holder out of welded up some pieces here and also he had a wrench that he closed off the end of the box end wrench so he could hang it here on the, on the table saw so it was always there handy and uh, anyway I always just kind of smile when I see that The saw's not plugged in right now, so. 
That's all right. So this metal cutting blade has the same rotation apparently. Here's the rotation. I think initially we'll probably want to just, this is um, a factory edge here, so we want to base all our cuts off that. So. gauge is still square. Okay. You just want to trim off, just barely trim off the edge of this. So let's, let's see. This looks about right. Let me plug it in. Plug in the table saw. Okay, here we go. We got the blade a little high. I'm gonna drop it down just a smidge. Right. Here goes nothing. I have my safety glasses on. Get this out of the way. did it looked like it did pretty well uh, the edge is nice and clean actually and I'm surprised how well it cut without, uh, without causing any problem maybe <laughs> I would almost think that maybe a regular a regular uh, wood blade might have been able to cut through that as well. Okay, so let's uh, do the same for the other side. We'll flip it here. I'm going to still use the factory edge here, this factory edge against my, uh, my miter. Oh, and uh, another thing I want to mention is, uh, is since this is in my grandpa's old saw, is uh, he uh, he rigged up this old. You might recognize this. It's a old uh, foot switch for um, high beams for an old car, and that's what he used as uh, as a switch on the saw. So I don't have to use my hands. I don't have to let go of my hands with my work. I can just switch off the saw without without doing anything. So I always thought that was kind of neat. Uh, I guess these saws didn't have a switch on them or maybe they did, but I, I don't see any place for them. So he added that. Okay, well, now I think uh, since we have a factory edge here, I'm gonna use the, the, the table saws fence to finish up this last, uh, this last piece here, this long piece. Um, here.
the metal piece got stuck right here, so I'm gonna lift it up. Pull that off of here. Resume the cut. too bad my hole isn't perfect but I'm not too worried about that um, I think that that blade did pretty well I'm kind of surprised how well it cut aluminum I guess maybe it could cut um, some harder metals than that but it did really well so maybe I will uh, quickly take a sander to this plate and see if I can get it to uh, take off all the paint Let's see if the brush cup can uh, do any better with it. Alright, interestingly enough, the oxide, the aluminum, like where the paint had come off, is a lot tougher than where, <laughs> where the paint is in it, but it's coming off really well with this brush cup. I really like how the, the brush cup actually digs in there and really knocks that paint off okay so I have the the plate pretty cleaned off I used some acetone and a little bit of uh, steel wool and was able to get some of that uh, high temp paint off of there um, because it did not want to come off very easily so now I think I'm ready to uh, to try to put the the holes for the plate on there. So I got the router here. Let me get the. Let me use the. Existing plate here is a template. Since my uh, <laughs> since my hole isn't the perfect, most perfect, uh, I can probably eyeball this. Just have a punch here, hold it in place. Another set. So it looks like at a minimum, a minimum, eleven sixty fourths. We could probably go with three sixteenths just to give us a little bit of play. So we'll go with the three sixteenths bit.
All right. That should work pretty good.